Ow! <laughs> I'm a little astronaut. Ready to go to space? Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye. Thank you for everything. All right, rock and roll. Rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> bye bye, beautiful. A new, super new Airbnb. Ah, look. Stopped already. Oh no. The front one. We're having a lot of trouble this morning with this GoPro. Or well, not just this morning, but like forever. This <laughs> GoPro on the front. Because it's like directly attached to the motorbike, it's just shaking so much, it just keeps restarting. It's kind of yeah. broken. Ready to go? Ready to go. Let's do it. Yep. Good morning, guys. Welcome back to our Guinness World Record attempt to become the youngest pair to circumnavigate the globe by motorcycle. We're here in the town of Lago Dehi in Georgia, and it's an absolutely beautiful little town right next to these crazy forested mountains and this national park behind us. The owner of the guest house was so nice. She gave us actually a bunch of grapes because they're making their own wine. So they have like a vineyard somewhere and it was just the picking season and she gave us this perfect, this perfect bunch of grapes. But more importantly, she gave us wine as well. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> A whole bottle! Because this area of Georgia, interestingly, is actually one of the oldest wine regions in the world. They found evidence that wine has been made here for at least 8,000 years. Can you believe it? 8,000 years! So they have a massively long tradition for making wine and now we have some Georgian wine but it is time to hit the road further into Georgia. We have a super exciting day ahead so let me show you guys our route for today. So we are here and today we're going to be taking this road to visit an ancient monastery before making our way down and across towards Georgia's capital Tbilisi. So as well as stopping at an awesome monastery, the Ala Verde Monastery, we're also going to be meeting up with another moto vlogger. So I don't know how many of you guys know Mark Travels, but we've been in contact for a little while and now it turns out that we are both here at the same time and so it's time to have a dual moto vlogging adventure together. Yeah, it's really cool. And he actually is traveling on an electric motorcycle from Berlin and Germany to New Zealand. So he's on a crazy long journey and all electric as well. That is absolutely amazing. Yeah. So he actually has booked an apartment already and he's been staying in Tbilisi he is going to ride out to meet us today at the Ala Verde monastery then we're going to go on a bit of a ride together and finish the day back at his place in Tbilisi but we've also got another awesome ride here in Georgia planned together so it's going to be so cool I can't wait so the first destination is about 60 miles away Google Maps says it will take us one and a half hours it's already nine o'clock so better hit the road let's go Whilst we're riding through the beautiful forested mountains on our way to meet Mark and the monastery, it's time to tell you guys some facts about country number 29 on our journey around the world, Georgia. So the area that makes up modern day Georgia has been home to human-like species since Homo erectus in the Paleolithic era. But the first mention of proto-Georgian tribes was from 12,000 BC, so 14,000 years ago. The country really reached its zenith in the 12th and 13th centuries where they had what they call the Georgian Renaissance or the Georgian Golden Age which actually preceded the Italian Renaissance and during that time there was a huge flourishing of 
art and philosophy and culture and they built a lot of the beautiful monasteries just like the one that we're going to be visiting today and as I said before they've also been growing wine in Georgia for more than 8,000 years including at the monastery we're about to visit today apparently they make their own wine so if that's the case we're definitely picking up a bottle <laughs> but due to Georgia's strategic position near the Silk Road in between a lot of trade routes it has been invaded a lot of times including by the Ottoman Empire the Persians the Mongol Empire the Russian Empire and actually they didn't get independence from the Russian Empire until 1917 but then just five years later they were taken over by the Soviet Union so actually they didn't really get their independence until 1991 when the Soviet Union collapsed so the modern day population of Georgia is 3.7 million people and a third of them live in the capital city Tbilisi the earliest reference to the name Georgia comes from an Italian map in 1320 and no one really knows where the name comes from a lot of people think that it's because of Saint George and actually the Saint George's cross is on the Georgian flag just like the English flag but the most accepted version of the name by scholars is that the Georgian comes from the old Georgian language meaning the land of the wolves but interestingly Georgia is not actually what Georgians call Georgia so they have their own name for the country which is Sakard Velo and Sakard Velo means land of the Kharti people and I think Kharti is a central region in Georgia so some interesting facts it actually has Europe's highest mountain range the Caucasus mountains run along the north Georgian border and actually the highest mountain in Georgia is 5,000 193 meters tall which is higher than Mont Blanc it's also home to Europe's highest settlement which is Ushguli and it sits at 2100 meters above sea level but it's not just a nation of highs because it's also home to the world's deepest cave discovered which is more than 2000 meters deep crazy stuff the country is also one of the most ecologically diverse and is home to 12 different climate zones from alpine to subtropical and even semi-desert in the south wow georgia seems to be a country with a very rich history can't wait to explore more here it is this is what eight thousand years of wine production makes wow look at this look at these bunches oh god sorry i thought that was a spider look at these bunches wow ah, and there's white grapes here look white grapes here very nice all right we've arrived in the area of Alaverdi and the Alaverdi monastery should be just up ahead but we've got a bunch of people herding their sheep on the road <laughs> traffic jam oh look at all their tails yeah. <laughs> hello hello oh, nice they look cute nice look at that hey yeah here we are the Alaverdi monastery that's awesome look at that Hello, 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 hello. There he is, Mr. Mark Travels. Nice. How's it going? <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Well, we almost didn't hear you. It's just like, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. So this is the bike. Is this the bike yeah. And your bike is called Eve. Eve, yeah. Okay, and this is Bumblebee. I know, I know. I've seen your videos. <laughs> nice. So Bumblebee, meet Eve. Eve, meet Bumblebee. You two have got to be good friends. So Mark, you have to give us a tour of your beautiful motorcycle, Eve. It's a Zero SRF. Uh, built in 2019. I bought it second hand. It has 110 horsepower, which is like... It's basically a rocket. 110 horsepower? Yeah. Ours has 105 horsepower. Yeah. That is absolutely insane. And it goes uh, 0 to 100 in uh, 
Three seconds. <laughs> Three seconds. And you're telling me that like the whole wheel wouldn't just lift up and the whole thing just. Has really control. Okay. I, I wouldn't do it. So like you can really put the power on. But the luggage on lifts up a little bit. Okay. Okay. But, uh, this is super modern technique, you know, with the traction control ABS and. and the, really controlled it's really controlled it's controlled it's the easiest bike to ride you know you don't have a clutch there's no, no there's no gears there's no gears it's just go and yeah. stop exactly you have this little motor here and the battery is 14.4 uh, kilowatt hours capacity okay so here's the motor yeah. and here's the battery yeah. and it's got a belt drive yeah so no no chain oiling either. No. I broke one belt already in Bulgaria. Did it snap whilst you were riding? Yeah. Okay. It's overtaking in November. Okay, and what happens? Do you just lose power or does it actually do something? No, it doesn't do anything anymore. You can just roll and then okay. put the part. It lasted 30,000 uh, kilometers, the first belt. 30,000 kilometers? Yeah. In the manual it says 37,000, but... Okay. Yeah, I mean, I hear people breaking them a lot because it's a little bit too too small like for the power the bike has and most people do it too tight you have to check regularly that that, that it's the right tension okay so has it got a little bit of yeah oh it's quite tight though no that's too, actually that too loose i think what they say in the manual is is too tight that's what i feel like just just from Hey, if anyone's gonna know, you're gonna know. Yeah, after <laughs> after uh, almost thirty thousand kilometers with yeah. the bike, you have the feeling there's one charger here, one yep. charger on the other side, and one charger here in the in the middle. A six kilowatt charger, three kilowatt, and three kilowatt. All at the same time. Yeah, three charge. And that helps it to charge faster. Yeah, the base model comes with a three kilowatt charger. Premium comes with a six kilowatt charger, and then you can add another charge tank they call it with another six kilowatts so you can at the car chargers you can charge with up to 12 kilowatts okay so how long at that would it take to charge you up full an hour an hour yeah. and then that's not bad it depends always on the charger too you know okay. like it also is very weather dependent okay when, the, when it's cold it charges a little bit slow when it's very hot then it charges usually very fast and can you charge it from like the mains electricity as well yeah. i have to sometimes yeah yeah you, you, you won't always find charges you know and how long does it take to charge with like a, just a regular mains charger uh four to five hours okay so that's like you plug it in overnight and then you'll yeah, still have a full battery yeah, in the morning how many times have you had to just like ask some random place like a cafe or something on this trip now that i started in berlin in december it was just once that i had to charge on the way but uh, i was in the uk before and i had to do it quite quite often because that is the already the second battery the ones that i had before was broken so i couldn't get the range so what's your full range then 200 to 230 kilometers 200 to 230 and of course how you ride you know in the city you can basically ride forever 300 350 kilometers okay so it's really dependent uh, on the on what you're doing the weather of course you know i started in berlin minus 10 degree oh wow that was that was a challenge you know like then you can really feel it like you can only get like 160 or something right you can't charge it when it's minus degree you have For to make sure that once you ride that you charge it up right away once uh, you know because if the battery gets cold zero degrees yeah then then that's it you can't charge it i mean it's just like a whole learning curve you know i mean that's why i do it i learned so much on this trip and and with the videos people learn a lot about it you know and to be fair like the range is not like a tiny range that you can only go yeah. from one town to the next yeah. 230 kilometers yeah. up to 300 i mean it's, it's still a considerable distance in most of the world this is going to be easily enough to get you from like a whole day's ride what's your longest ride so far on Five, this bike 500 miles i, I did uh, 500 yeah, in a day. that's longer than our longest ride yeah. from the netherlands to uh berlin so if anybody thinks that like you're limited with an electric bike of like oh but i I can't go far well mark has a longer ride on this bike than we have on bumblebee <laughs> at least in europe there's so many chargers okay i mean that i always tell people if you don't look for them you won't see them okay you know they're very little you don't notice them because yeah. you don't look for them you know you, you look for a petrol station yeah you know? if you look at the map and just charges it do you have like an electric charging station app yeah not just one <laughs> every country has their own app turkey was actually quite nice because they had just one big provider yeah with one charging app. so you just needed that app and then it's like you know where they all are yeah. so but tell me about maintenance what do you have to do like to keep this thing going nothing really <laughs> <laughs> the only liquid is the brake fluid so no oil no oil brakes last forever yeah you have the the motor 
uh, regenerate energy and it does it while braking. Like if you have your bike in second gear, it will stop you yep. and it will recharge the battery while doing it. So you don't really use the brakes. They last like 20, 30 thousand. No way. Yeah, easy. So, and that's just because the engine is braking the bike a lot more than the disc. I'm basically, I'm just using the the, the brakes for emergency or for the last otherwise you just stop the power and it slows you just let go of the throttle and then it just no way in the beginning you're like oh okay okay so yeah 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 but, but you're used to it at some point and then it's just just the best thing in the world how much does it cost to use the charger in, in georgia it's a full charge it's like three euro okay max. yeah really good yeah. germany or uk is a little bit more expensive okay in, in turkey it was super super cheap yeah yeah i was uh, in tunisia there were chargers as well and they were free for example no way there are many free chargers here as well i only got ripped off in i think it was austria they, they charged me like 20 euro for a charge on a, no like, way. On a charging station no from way. a hotel yeah, yeah and it but still for like for like a, a petrol bike that would be quite a normal that would be quite a normal <laughs> fill up wow yeah. all right anyway i think we should go and visit this beautiful monastery which has been our backdrop the whole time yep. yeah let's check it out so lovely as to wear this super cool dress look at that it's matching quite nicely though. Kind of looks, good, yeah. it looks pretty good, especially with the bandana. Mark has his, uh, his camera there. Look at that. I do this for a living. <laughs> you know, they make their own wine here as well. Ah, nice. It's actually like a vineyard monastery. I guess this is how they make a living. <laughs> think magical because there was some choir singing going on inside as well which was just beautiful like very calming and very nice yeah this like polyphonic a cappella georgian folk singing it's beautiful So this is the Alaverde Monastery. The monastery was built in the 11th century, but some parts of it date back to the 6th century. And the cathedral we were just in is considered one of the four great cathedrals of the Georgian Orthodox world. At 55 meters tall, this cathedral was the tallest religious building in the whole of Georgia, all the way up until 2004, when the Holy Trinity Cathedral in Tbilisi was built. Boo, knocked it off the top post. <laughs> How do you have to do that to Blissey? But yeah, it's a beautiful example of Georgian Orthodox architecture. Plus they make wine here, so that's pretty awesome. So we've gone into the wine shop because we want to see if we can get our hands on a bottle of holy wine. <laughs> this is uh, Monaster's wine. Oh wow. No way. Thank you. So what wine did you get? So, unfortunately, we couldn't afford the wine from the monastery because it's like 40 pounds for a bottle. That's pretty much our whole daily budget. So we bought a wine from the region, which is the Badagoni region. And actually it has the monastery on the label. And this one was only like four or five pounds, so <laughs> <laughs> I think it's close enough. So whilst we're here in the parking lot, Mark said that I can have a go on his bike. <laughs> I get to ride Eve, this is crazy. This is the brake. You got a foot brake, so that's the same, like that's exactly the same. Okay, so basically do I just twist and go? That's it. Oh my lord. Wow, that's so low. Like, I can actually have my feet completely flat. That is absolutely crazy. I mean, Bumblebee must be so much higher than this. That's crazy. So, is it already on? No way. Oh my god, it is already on. You can't even tell when it's on or off. 
That's insane. Oh my lord. Oh my god. No way. It's so unbelievably quiet. Whoa. It is so quiet. That's unbelievable. Oh wow! Oh no, okay, alright, go on then. Put it in my mode okay. because there's everything full power. Okay, so this is everything full power now. I don't know, okay. Whoa! <laughs> That's insane. Oh my lord, that is so fast! Oh, that's really, really fast. <sighs> that's really, really powerful. And I really like how low it is. I can just like walk my way around in a circle. Whoa, is that full of power. This is insane. What a beautiful place to be doing it as well. Look at this monastery. Whoa. That's so super fast. The way that it just like whips up up to like, that's so cool. And how, how quiet it is as well. I can almost like hear the nature around. That's what I love most about it. And like when it's off, it's just completely off like that. That's so brilliant. So there you go, guys, look at that. Maybe something for our next trip. All right, Mark <laughs> and us ready to hit the road to Tbilisi, eh? <laughs> Let's do it. Yes. <gasps> <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Sweetie, we don't need to do that. <laughs> <laughs> You're crazy! <laughs> oh man. Wow, Mark's machine has endless power, I tell you. Endless power. Oh, it looks like there might have been a tree fallen over. Yeah. Oh, he's saying go. Thank you! Anyway, it's so super cool that we have made a new biker friend. Mark is awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool that we could be here at the same time, same place and hang out for a couple of days. Yeah, it's amazing. So now we have about 60 miles to Tbilisi. It will take us about two hours and we have a really, really cool mountain pass coming up. So I can't wait. Yep, let's do some nice Georgian riding. <laughs> God, he's like really going for it. <laughs> wow. So we've lost Mark. His bike is too powerful. <laughs> yeah, we lost him already. <laughs> but I think we ah. are stopping here because we have reached the Gombori Pass. Nice. So oh, I don't know if I can get it there. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can get up here. This is pretty extreme for me. Yeah, you. <laughs> Yeah, do it. I'm gonna give it a go. I did it. Okay, wait, wait. I do that bit first. <laughs> Wait a second. <laughs> yes! Oh my lord. Too bad. <laughs> I sort of took it in two stages. First stage, get up the first hill, stop, take a look around, and then reposition myself because I don't think I could make it like all the way around in one go. 
way worse than this around the world. I've fallen over too many times. Oh really? Too many times. But hey, not this time. A sugary fruit tea. Yeah, yeah, this is all they have. Cheers. 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 Thanks, Mark. <laughs> awesome. Some nice tea at the top of the pass. Beautiful. Yeah, it's awesome, and it's not raining, and I'm really happy about that. <laughs> Look oh. what just happened. I just ripped Lavi's mic off accidentally and broke it. So we're not going to have any audio from Lavi for the rest of uh, the ride, unfortunately. I know you can tune out now. Look at this winding ahead. Look at that. So it looks like we've got an hour and a quarter left, 67 kilometers. Oh yeah, because you're in kilometers. Yeah, I'm kilometers, yeah. In the UK, I switched everything to miles. Did you? Yeah, yeah, sure. I stick with miles because I'm yeah, British. You, you, you stuck with miles everywhere. Everywhere, because I don't know how to change it. <laughs> you know, this bike comes with a reverse. It, you can actually do reverse gear? Yeah, if you pay 200 bucks for it, then, then you can. No way. I never bought it. <laughs> oh my god okay yes nice oh yes look at this We've got a beautiful way down lovey says very cool <laughs> I want to give the viewers a transcript of what you're saying. Ollie is a... <laughs> I'm not saying that! <laughs> the famous Ujama Fortress! So tell us about the Ujama Fortress! <laughs> well, I was actually built a long time ago. Built a long time ago, yep. The room still oh, oh, yes, no. <laughs> oh! Oh my lord, we're going. I think these guys are building it. It's old, it's just under construction. Yes. We'll stop at the petrol station. We'll fill, fill up at home. Okay, yeah, you're going to fill up at home. <laughs> that's my synchronization. Coming into the capital of Georgia, Tbilisi up ahead. And I've no idea how far it is to Mark's apartment, but. We're just following him. But it was a really beautiful ride down from the Gombori Pass. Such beautiful windy forested roads. And now we just got to contend with the city and the traffic on our way in. Oh yeah, I forgot you can't talk. <laughs> I was like, Lavi's not really saying very much. How far are we? Uh, 16 kilometers. 16? Okay. No. Uh, a little bit. But not too much because we're pretty fat. <laughs> oh, right. oh, right here. This is it. I feel like that's too hard for me to maneuver into there. <laughs> Tiptoeing around, I can't do anything. I can't even push the bike on my own. Levy has to push me everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So here we go, this is home 
home for the next couple of days. Oh, it's nice. Look at this. There's lights. Oh my God, we are living in the future. It's going to be nice. For a whole month, I paid the 850 euros. That's amazing. What a place for the month. So that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family, comment below. See you next time.